Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing. This Praxis video is brought to us by a number of requests from the Physionic channel on a particular video in which I discuss the reasons why or the reason why people pass out when they're lifting heavy weights. So there are instances in which people lift heavy weights, put the weight down or rack the weight and then they pass out and people are getting aggravated because of course, well, that's incredibly annoying. And some people get really close to blacking out. So they black out, but don't necessarily pass out. So there are a number of different circumstances, but essentially it is a drop in blood pressure. And if you'd like to know more on that, of course, I've got my article, which is, I will link it below so you can read it and go into far more of the physiology of what exactly is occurring. So what is occurring? In basic terms, you have this high increase in blood pressure from weightlifting as you're bearing down, as your larynx is closing, your glottis specifically is closing, which is creating a lot of pressure between your periphery, your heart, and your head. And then when you re-rack the weight, then you see this release, you breathe out. And when you breathe out, you have this sudden sharp drop in blood pressure as your cerebrospinal fluid, as well as your brain, the vasculature around your brain, all of that has to suddenly sharply change and has to account for the sudden drop in blood pressure. And that's when you have this blackout that occurs. So what can you do about that? Well, there are two primary things that you can do. The first thing is if it's possible to not lower the weight slower, but after you've lowered the weight, don't necessarily release all the air out of your lungs. Kind of taper instead of having this sharp drop from being in a high pressure situation. And you feel it when you're bearing down, you feel this high amount of pressure within your body because you're creating it. You are, you're closing that larynx, you're closing that glottis so that you're creating that pressure itself. So if you can taper that and make it much longer, make have that go over an extended period of time, then you're going to go from a high pressure situation and you're still going to end up in that low pressure situation, but it gives your body enough time or at least more time to adjust the small things that it needs to adjust so that you don't have this blackout period. So that's the first thing you can do. And I realized that that's not always going to be possible and maybe it might not work for certain individuals. So in that situation, what you can also do is help your heart. How do you do that? Well, you help your heart because your heart isn't the only thing that's pumping blood throughout your body. I know people always think about the heart and yes, the heart is the main thing that pumps blood throughout your body, but your skeletal muscles around your, especially around your legs, squeeze blood. In your veins, you have these leaflets that open and close. And when they close, blood can't go backwards. And when your muscles squeeze, they squeeze the blood back up. So instead of being standing still, and especially you don't want to just lie down or uh, sit down, you want to keep moving. So if you can maybe implement both of these situations, especially if you're kind of moving in place, and this is what a lot of runners do for a little bit of the same reason, but certainly other reasons as well. And I have videos on that as well. But if you can just kind of keep moving in place, I know it looks silly, but that added help for your heart so that you can equilibrate some of that pressure and allow some of that, that blood to go from falling all the way down into your legs and moving away from your head, which of course that's the reason why you're blacking out. If you can get some of that blood to remain or to get back up to your head as quickly as possible, it'll at least reduce the severity of that blackout period. So I'm not guaranteeing that any of this stuff will work, but physiologically, if you understand the physiology, and I definitely encourage you to watch the full length video as well as read the article because I have all my references for that, uh, that would be two things that I would think would absolutely help, if not at least somewhat help. Hopefully it will tremendously help with the whole blackout phase. And if all else fails, then maybe you need to consult your doctor and maybe you need to talk to a strength and conditioning coach about reprogramming because there might just be no hope for you.
but let's hope not. <laughs> okay, with that said, hopefully it was informative. And if you have any tips, if you've come across anything, I would be happy to hear them down in the comments. And I hope that I have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye.